Hello guys, Lawrence Wayne here, and today I'm going to show you the amazing engineering behind this Huion drawing tablet I got off eBay. So, for those who don't know how a drawing tablet works, basically you have this pen, and you can move it across here, sort of hover it over the top, and on the computer screen you'd see where you're hovering this, and you can then push it down, and it's got a pressure sensitive tip, so you can sort of sketch and all that, or play also if that's what you use it for, which is what I mostly use it for. Uh, so it transmits the pressure, and it can also transmit the state of two buttons on the pen. Uh, and it does this all wirelessly, of course, and it can do this whilst you're hovering over the board. You don't have to have it pushed down with any sort of physical contact. Um, so that raises an interesting engineering question of how do you transmit all this information from the pen down to the space station? Um, so if you try to think of this logically, you might come up with a rather complicated solution. So firstly, you're going to need something to measure the pressure on the tip, right? So maybe a potentiometer or something. Um, obviously, this isn't really suited for pressure sensing. There are special pressure sensors. I don't have one lying around. So then you need to transmit it down. So maybe you think, well, I might need a Bluetooth radio or some sort of uh, wireless radio. Uh, and driving those isn't easy, so you'll need a little microcontroller that maybe reads from here and then transmits it through some or other protocol. But microcontrollers, um, they're not particularly easy. They're rather fussy about their power supply, so you're going to need a special power supply. And then obviously you need to fit the battery on there, and it all becomes quite a big mess. But Huion, uh, the manufacturer of this graphics tablet, they're a Chinese company, and Chinese companies are all about cost saving and just finding ways to cut costs and everything. And they figured out how to transmit all of this information using only a single transistor and the magic of electromagnetism. They don't even need a pressure sensor. Let me show you how it works. So the first big question is, of course, how is it transmitting this information? Uh, so what I have set up here is an oscilloscope hooked up to an inductor. And an inductor is essentially just a coil of wire. It's nothing too fancy. And here we have this pen. And this is just an oscilloscope showing you um, pretty much the voltage over time. So as we bring this pen closer to this inductor, oh, if I aim it correctly, you can see that as it gets closer, it's generating some sort of signal. And that's because when you open up this pen at the tip, you'll see that there's basically a coil just like the one below at the top of the pen, except it's been wound a lot better than my one has. So that's how it transmits its position and other information, which we'll get to later. Um, but how does the base station read it? Well, a very similar manner to how this thing works, except uh, it can't be bothered to use a full coil. So what it does is it saves costs a bit by making a smaller coil. So what we have here is the ground clip of the oscilloscope probe hooked up straight to the input terminal of the oscilloscope probe, uh, which seems like a sort of useless uh, thing to do because obviously it will just measure ground because you're just putting ground into the input. But of course, this is a loop, and a single loop also is also an inductor. So once we bring this pen close, it will actually pick up the signal. Um, now, an interesting thing of the, about this inductor is that it won't pick up any signal if our pen is outside of the loop, but as soon as it enters its loop, it'll pick up the signal. And so it's picking up basically this vertical line here. It can be anywhere inside this vertical line. It seems to have nudged my camera. Anywhere inside this vertical line, then it'll pick up the signal with more or less the same strength. As soon as we move out of it, well, ignore that. That's just because this isn't exactly parallel to the pen. But uh, it doesn't pick it up. Um, so, with this in mind, how this base station essentially works is it has an antenna essentially just running straight up, and another running straight up, and another running straight up, and just basically a lot of them, maybe a thousand, I don't know the exact number, uh, all running vertically on this side, and then maybe along the back they're running horizontally. And what it simply does is all the antennas are set up basically like this one, and some chip inside the base unit basically just scans all the antennas and finds one that has a signal on it. And 
once it finds the one with the signal, it knows where our tip is on this board. So if, say, this antenna is picking it up and this antenna is picking it up, then the pen must probably be here. Whereas if it's this antenna and this antenna, then our pen is over there. So we just sort of scan all of them and figure out which one receives a signal. And so that's the problem of the positioning of the pen done. And because this is wireless, we've already figured out how to do this whilst the pen is hovering over the device, as long as it's, you know, within reasonable range. Um, how does it transmit uh, useful information? Well, it also transmits it over this uh, wireless uh, electromagnetic link. And it does so in a rather interesting way. So the buttons, when you push them, let me try and get this. I'm going to push the front button now. You can see that the waves move, and that's because the frequency is changing when I press this button. And when I push the back button, the frequency changes as well. But if you look closely, the frequency changes by a different amount. So the base station can simply read that sudden jump in frequency, and depending on what frequency it jumped to, you can tell which button was pressed. We'll get to how it's changing the frequency a bit later. Um, but what's also interesting is, of course, the tip is the pressure on the tip is also transmitted in the same way. When I push this, you can see it's a bit more subtle, but depending on how hard I push this tip, the frequency also changes. Um, it's quite hard to see. My oscilloscope uh, sort of moves the waves around as the frequency drops, but they are getting slightly smaller when I push this in. So what we have here is basically a simplified version, slightly simplified version, of the circuit inside this pen. So it is essentially, no, it actually just is an LC circuit, which means it's an inductor wired in series to a capacitor. Except I'm using two capacitors in parallel here to act as one capacitor because I don't have the right capacitor value. That doesn't matter. Um, anyway, if you remember from physics, wiring an inductor to a capacitor creates an oscillator because these will charge up and then they'll discharge through the inductor. And once these have completely discharged, the inductor will want to keep carrying current through. So the capacitors charge up again, but in reverse. And then the process repeats, but now the current goes the other way, and then it goes one way, and the other, and one the other. And it creates an oscillation. Um, now, of course, in practice, this doesn't really happen because there's resistance in the wire, so the voltage very quickly settles to zero. But um, for demonstration purposes, I just have a little function generator here, which will just generate a quick, short we can focus a um, square wave of for 10% of the time and then at some frequency that makes it easy to see what's going on. Um, the frequency doesn't, the exact frequency doesn't really matter because it's just a frequent kick to give it that waveform. So as you can see, when the kick happens, which is here, then it sort of keeps oscillating by itself and the frequency just kind of drops. Now, inside this pen, of course, the frequency keeps going, as you saw earlier. So to do that, you essentially use a transistor, which is basically an amplifier or a switch. It's either an amplifier or a switch, depending on how you use it. But that's going to be beyond the scope of this video, so we're just going to ignore it. But do know that you can amplify the signal over here to make it basically keep going up and down forever, which is exactly what this pen does. You only need one transistor for that. Very simple circuit. Um, now, of course, this coil is exactly the same as the coil over here, and as we saw, as a side effect of using an inductor, you create an electromagnetic field, which, as it turns out, you can pick up with a base station like this one. And so, in creating the signal we need to transmit, um, we are already transmitting it, so quite a bit of cost saving there. Um, how are we going to transmit the buttons? Um, simple enough, we just change the frequency, right? As you saw earlier, how you can change the frequency, or one way to change the frequency, is to change the capacitance. So we just have another capacitor here, and when I put this in here, uh, see if you can see what's happening here, but the frequency changes, and so does the amplitude, but don't worry too much about the amplitude. Um, the waves spread out a bit further, as you can see when we add the extra capacitor. So very simply what's happening inside here is when you push one of these buttons, you're just adding another capacitor in series 
to uh, in parallel, sorry, to the existing capacitors. Um, and that changes the frequency, which the base station picks up as a button press. No need for any microcontrollers to encode that information. And last, but definitely not least, how do we transmit the pressure sensor? So the spring is presumably made of metal that sort of pushes this uh, thing back. That's pretty much the only hardware that's there. Uh, now I don't have a spring, but I do have this metal nail. And watch what happens when we bring this nail into our inductor. You might be able to see it there. The frequency of this wave is slightly smaller when it gets into it. When it leaves, it's slightly higher. And that's because this is, of course, a metal which affects the magnetic, uh, the electromagnetic waves and all that uh, going through here, which sort of interferes with the inductance of the inductor, which much like changing the capacitance of this capacitor thing here, um, messes with the frequency. And so, very simply, you can imagine this being the spring, or this being the head of the pen, and when you push it down more, um, then the frequency changes as you do so. And again, the base station simply picks that up, and there you go, you have literally a completely 100% free pressure sensitive tip with zero electronics. Um, that is some amazing engineering, if you ask me. Just using the laws of electromagnetism to fit yourself free sensors, free transmitters. Um, this is just a component of your circuit. And of course, one last thing to note, um, whilst microcontrollers need a fancy power supply, you can see we can change the amplitude of the signal we give here, so if we change it, um, you can see that the wave is increasing in size, but the frequency change, uh, doesn't change at all. So essentially, a bigger or a more fully charged battery just means it transmits a stronger signal to the base station, but that doesn't matter. If the signal's still strong enough to get to the base station, it'll still come out at exactly the same frequency regardless of the charge of the battery, which means we don't need some fancy uh, voltage regulation circuit. We can just hook the battery straight up to the uh, oscillator circuit, which is exactly what this button does. It just pushes down a contact onto the battery that sits in this the body of this pen. And that's really all there is to it. Um, that is just how you transmit the state of two buttons, a pressure sensitive tip, and the position of a pen, all using a single transistor and some very clever physics. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.